Hi everyone, and welcome to the second episode of Immigrant Life. I'm Daniel DeBiasi, and in this podcast I share stories of people who left their country to chase a better life. Today's guest is originally from Bulgaria and now lives in the UK. Her journey as an immigrant started with the idea of working just a few months in Greece over the summer. In this episode, we are diving into the struggles of starting a new life in a new country and how to overcome failure. I find this episode very uplifting, inspiring, and motivational. We connected over Facebook. Um, she reached out to me after seeing my post where I was looking for immigrants willing to share their story on the show. I'm very glad she did. Please enjoy this episode with my new friend, Theodora. Hi, Theodora. Thanks for being on the show today. Hi, Daniel. Thanks very much for having me. No worries. How are you? I'm really good. Thank you. I heard about um, your podcast and uh, I think this is really, really exciting what you're doing. And thanks again for having me um, as a guest. That's a big privilege. Oh, thank you. That was nice. That was nice from you. Where are you now? Are you in uh, UK, London? Is that right? Uh, Yes, that's right. So um, I'm originally from uh, Bulgaria. But uh, I live in UK since 2010. I even remember I did 10 years this month, actually. I arrived on the 23rd of April, 2010. Oh, congratulations on your, I don't know how you call it, (laughs) country birthday, I don't know. So from Bulgaria, what age did you leave Bulgaria? Uh, The the story is a bit more complicated because, uh, so what happened to me is um, I finished my secondary school uh, with a college. This is how we call it. So I was 19 at that point when I finished school. And then I applied for university. I did go to university. I spent two years in university. But um, then um, I didn't have intention of, of going abroad or something like that. It just happened to me because my country's economy, uh, 15, 20 years ago was, uh, was really bad uh, then. Um, and I remember a big part that made me take that decision is why I was in a university. Um, I, was, I was studying journalism. I was a reporter. It was really good. I had a job. Well, I had a job in a local uh, TV, a very small TV. Um, uh, how is this called? TV station or TV channel? Sorry, yes, TV channel. And then I was so so excited. You can't imagine. You know, I was. I was. This is what I was um, studying, and uh, I could go through everything. But after three months of uh, doing this thing, and the salary that I was getting was very very little, so I can barely support myself because I was a very independent girl since then. I wanted to do everything myself, so I just put the numbers together and I said, you know, you can't do it really. It's it's very difficult. So you need to find a different way until. At, Unless, you know, I had another option that I I was thinking of. So I took the decision to go just for the summer to Greece because I'm half Greek, half Bulgarian. So I took the decision to go to Greece and just spend the summer over there, work a little bit and uh, things like that. But yeah, things happened that I went to Greece and um, I stayed there. I stayed there for five years. Um at the beginning was um, was very hard, very, very hard. Um, really a life of uh, a lonely soul. Um, and it didn't get it didn't get easier even towards the end, to be honest. That's that was the big decision of mine that I left that country because um, I was feeling very lonely. Why? Because of the language barrier or because of the people culture? No, I was I was very good. I was my 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 Greek was really really good. I was speaking. Um, I, I was able to communicate and understand everyone. You know, I pick up very quickly even pronunciation. But um, I, I don't know. It's kind of I never found my uh, my belonging. Where do I belong in this? I never found a soulmate. Even. Um, so I had a good friend. She was Greek then, but then she married, and I was uh, I was alone again. And probably that loneliness. I just I just felt that I, I don't fit really. I don't know how. I just felt it all the way. So um, I took the decision to come here. There was another opportunity. So I was finishing from Greece, and this uh, well, was 
was taking the decision to go back to Bulgaria when um, the big love of my life, he invited me to come and live with him. So we were having some kind of uh, communication uh, during the years. We had our big love uh, as we were teenagers, but he invited me to come live with him here in London. And I did it. Oh, so he was already in London. So he was living in London. He was, yes, he was here already. Okay. He was, okay. he had it for me a little bit easier, set up the things easier for me. So I didn't, I didn't have to go through everything that I went through in Greece as a start. So uh, for me, it was slightly easier, but I tell you what, it was a big struggle because when I arrived in 2010, so Bulgaria, my country, I'm a Bulgarian citizen. So my country uh, again, was in the in European Union, but still was kind of, um, things was w- weren't very clear then. So um, they weren't giving to everyone the national insurance number so easily. This is what you need actually to start working and paying for your contribution and everything around. So I needed to go for interview eight times and I was rejected seven times. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I remember I had a job. I had a job. I had a normal job. You know, I, I was earning money. Um, I was giving um references from uh for the from the job that I'm working. And even I, I was they were telling me, you know, we had a call yesterday, they called us from the whole home office, you know, to um to confirm that it, you uh, you you work for us, and we said that you're great, that you work for us, and everything's fine, uh, and then they rejected me again, and I was like, "Oh no, oh, really?" <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was the hard part. At the end of it, I remember that eighth interview. I went there, and at the end of it, I just said because they said to me, "You haven't changed anything about your circumstances," so the answer is most definitely going to be the same. And I broke into tears and I said, guys, what do you want me to do? Really? What do you want me to do? I have a job. Uh, I have everything needed around, all the documents around, and I can't get a national insurance number to be uh, to be a member of this community. Yeah. Uh, then they uh, told me a little trick that I needed to do. Uh, so my partner then helped me. He did, um, we did apply together for that uh, purple card. So that was giving you, allowing you to work and stay in the country. And this What's is a purple card? My, yeah, the, years ago, that was a yellow card, a blue card, and a purple card. So with the yellow card, you just got the permission to uh, to stay until some time. With the blue card, you just got uh, the permission. Um, I'm not sure what is it, but the purple card was the most of it. So it was uh, the package of all these things. So I had the permission to stay. I had the permission to work. Um, yes, the blue card was the permission to work as a self-employed, self-employed only. And the purple card was the permission to work as a self-employed and employee as well. So I had it all. And that was uh, that was great. But after the eight time. <laughs> okay. Um, a couple of questions here. Um, Ask me. When you were applying for jobs, what kind of jobs were you applying for? Jobs that you had experience on? So like uh, you said, was a, you were a journalist. Is that what you were doing in Greece? Mm. So what kind of jobs you were applying on? No, the thing is, when I come in the country, um, I wasn't confident. Now, looking back, I can see actually uh, a big potential in me then. But the big luck was the confidence and belief in my own uh, abilities. So I was applying for jobs that uh, anyone can get. Um, I started as a nanny. And uh, a big thing that helped me in the job was uh, my Greek. Because the family, the family that I work for was um, uh, Greek, was half Greek, half English, and they really wanted to teach their children to speak Greek. So that was a big thing for me. Yeah, that helped me. That helped me a lot. And uh, so that was was that your first job yeah. that you got? Yeah. Okay. That was my first job. That was my first job. And then from then, um, I started actually working with children. I started liking this. 
children was kind of my uh, passion. And I said, I want to I wanna progress over this. I want to make myself more professional uh, as I'm working with children. So um, I educate myself. I took level two and level three on an early years educator. And uh, my next job was working in, as a nursery nurse in a, in a nursery, as a teacher in a nursery. So you said that you had a job or you had your, all your paperwork, but they didn't give you the, um, the number to be able to work in, in, in the UK. In that moment, did you feel like a rejected, you know what I mean? Like an unwanted case? Yes. Do you feel that way or yeah. just like a, whatever? That's just bureaucracy. Yes. Yeah. I was feeling the same way. I felt unwanted and rejected. Uh, and I, I could clearly tell that if I, if I was alone, here or by myself without the support of my partner then I would be out of the country no way to support myself how could I because without papers actually you're not you're not gaining as much and uh, you're not earning as much you can't support yourself and I had actually uh, people who I um, who I had the opportunity to meet here they came for the same thing to find a better life, but because on that time they, they weren't giving as much national insurance number or very easily, they spent three, three months of waiting and going through the rejections and they needed to go back. Uh, you can't go through by yourself without support. It's, it, yeah, no, it's hard. I had this similar situation when I came to Canada. A same situation, I moved, um, I met my, my girlfriend at the time in New Zealand where I was living and we pretty much moved at the same time here in Canada where she was from. So she was okay, she had the passport, she was, she was from, from, from Vancouver, she was actually from, from Canada, so she was yeah. okay. But my situation was a little bit different. I had a visa before I met her, okay. uh, so I was already planning to come to Canada. But even then I came here with, they only gave me like a six months visa, which I thought was all, was all here. I, I, because I applied for a working holiday visa. And last time when I applied for the, the same visa in New Zealand was for a year. And when I applied to Canada, they only gave me like a six months visa. So finding a job with six months visa was not easy. I was trying to find a job in a career was different than mine. I was trying to find a job as a software developer. All right. I went through, I don't know how many, I mean, I applied, so I don't know many jobs. I went through, um, a few, a couple of interviews, not probably more than a couple of interviews. And I felt terrible afterwards. I felt like I was nobody, like not good enough. I felt terrible. Yeah. Um, so then I started applying for other jobs where um, it was more like I'm in my field and I was more su successful. But even then the application to get a work permit here in Canada was just atrocious. It was like a so hard to stay. Even then it was just like, If even I was in the same situation. If it wasn't for my girlfriend at the time, I would have left. I'm just like, why the hell I'm gonna stay here? If you guys don't want me, you know what? I'm leaving. I just go where some somewhere where they want me because I know I'm good. I know I can bring value to this country. So if you guys don't, it's like it's naive to do to to say that because they don't know you. You're just another another immigrant. For me, it's like I'm not an immigrant. That's, it's it's me. It's my life. You know what I mean? It just I'm. You feel like you're. I don't know, different or special in some, in certain way, but I thought you, you guys, you know what, if you don't want me, just I'm, I'm going, I'm going somewhere else. I don't have to stay here. If you guys don't want me, that, that's kind of situation. You don't want to be somewhere where they don't, they don't want you. Why would you? You know, this is exactly what I felt. And because I believe in myself that I'm honest person, I always been honest and I, I try always to be very fair. And, you know, I wouldn't take, um, I wouldn't take anything for granted or anything that it's not mine or shouldn't be mine, you know, asking or treat cheating, you know, all these little things that you can go and, um, Sometimes people, uh, I know that sometimes people try to cheat a little bit, um, especially with benefits and things like that, if you think of that as you're coming at the lower stages. But uh, I don't like this kind of stuff. And uh, I've always been proud of myself in a way that uh, I'm here to bring value. And I just want you in return to give me a chance. This is that goal. And so after 10 years in this country, I like it. 
I like it here, to be honest. I like my life in here. I like the people. I like the way it is. Uh, you know, that it's always been like that. You can find some uh, not so nice thing, but most of the things are really, really nice and I like. And even I booked my uh, uh, life in UK test. This is something that you need to go through if you want to apply for a passport here. So, uh, it, sorry, can you repeat that? I didn't. I didn't get it. I, I did apply. Um, I did apply for test in UK. This is something something that you need to do before you apply uh, for your uh, citizenship. What kind of test is that? Like a test about the country? You yes, need to know you the need history to know of the country. History. It's about their history. Okay. All their kings and all their big battles and a little bit of uh, art and a little bit of uh, history. Yeah. From the beginning, bronze there, and we're going through the modern world and all around. Yeah. For all their prime ministers. It's really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I hate history. I've never been like a good student. I hate history. I just, I hate wars. I hate, I hate everything about it. Um, but hopefully if I stay in, in Canada, the history is a bit easier in Canada. The yes. history is much yeah. shorter. It's Imagine if you have to apply it for uh, the same citizenship in Italy. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> but yeah. England is not, it's not much different. There's, there's not much. Yeah, there's, there's still a lot of history to learn. <laughs> And so when, when, are you, when are you getting the test? So I booked it on 8th of July during the COVID, actually. Uh, they've, um, they've rescheduled everything. So the earliest that I can book was uh, end of June, beginning of July. So I chose July. Okay. Yeah. Do you feel ready? Uh, wish me luck. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting ready. I'm reading, right, reading most of it. I'm writing some little notes about this. It's quite difficult, I find it, you know, because there's so many days uh, and you're getting confused, but I'll get there. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to give you any question to test you because I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to do that. Um, okay, so you, you say that you'll decide to stay there just because you, you love the country, you love England, right? So I told you that I came because of uh, love, because, yes, uh, because of my partner. And uh, since then, I've created a family, which I found is really, really important part for me to keep me going and um, to feel home. Yes. I don't feel alone anymore. That's the that's big. Thing. That's the main thing. Yeah, yes. that's the main thing. And uh, a good thing that um, this country is giving me opportunities. Yes, it's giving me lots of opportunities. And this is what I this is what I always wanted. You know, it's up to me to build this up. I wanted to study uh, uh, for a teacher. I went and did that. Then, uh, you know, all these opportunities. Sometimes they're not given as easy. Yeah. But if you know what you want, you get there. I was working as a uh, as a nursery teacher, and towards the end of my the month that I was finishing that job, uh, uh, I could feel that something big is missing. Uh, I I could feel that I'm not able to do this for long. Something is missing. I need to find that missing piece, and. Um, I was doing some. I was doing swimming classes with my uh, with my little boy, with that company. When I received an email saying that saying that they're looking, they're looking for a new teacher. They're recruiting. So if you're interested, you know, send an email. All the details. They contact you and ask you to come for interview. And I did it. Once I read that email, uh, for, in my mind was yes. I've got this, you know, that's my thing. That's the missing piece. It was so linked to what I'm doing. It was still working. I was still working with children, but then it was something absolutely new, exciting. You know, you're working not only with children, but with adults as well. And this, that was my thing. And it was big fun. Um, so when I went for that interview, um, I think, you know, always when you do something and then at the end of it, you've got this feeling, how did you go? How, how did I do over that, over that thing? And I had this feeling that it went well. I did well. <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, I was, um, I was rejected. Um, for me, uh, I didn't feel bad. Not at all. 
yeah I just felt you know what probably it's not the right time but I'll keep pushing because I could feel this is my thing it doesn't matter what you do it doesn't matter what you say I'll get there because this is my missing piece and I went to a second interview the second interview was uh, even in greater depth uh, because there are two two ladies that own the franchise so there were two of them over there asking different questions this time and it was a little bit more interacting uh, I, I did good <laughs> at least this is what I felt but I was rejected again <laughs> I was rejected again. So yes, but I kept pushing and pushing in a way that this didn't put me down. I said, all right, doesn't matter. It's just not the right time, but I'll get there. And yet the third time, Danny, was my uh, lucky time. <laughs> so yeah, I got the job. I got the job. And uh, I want to say, again, I'm saying it. Uh, it doesn't matter how long it's going to take you. The most important thing is to know where you're going you know, don't give up. If you know what you want, where you're going, just keep pushing and just keep going. You find a way. The most important thing is to believe in yourself. I absolutely agree with you. Um, for some people, it's even hard to know what you want to do in life. But even then, like, um, if you are lucky to know what you want to do in life, uh, yeah, I think rejection is just like a, it's, it's, it's part of the journey. And if you get over it, if you're like, okay, it could be, maybe I'm not good enough yet. So, okay, that's what I want to do. They're rejecting me for many reasons. One could be, I'm not good enough yet. Or maybe it could be, I can't sell myself as good as other people. Mm. Okay, let's work on it. Let's improve that. Uh, that's what I want to do anyway. So why don't get better at why I'm trying to get a job? So just go back and just get better and better and better until, until you, at the end you get the job. Yeah. Right. When I, before I get this job, the swimming teacher, I was really, really passionate about it. I'm, I'm still very passionate. I love my job, but uh, I went on an interview uh, three times and uh, I was rejected because I was, uh, I think a foreigner. Okay. Uh, I think because my, my pronunciation wasn't because I'm still the only one in a in a company that is not English speaker speaking. That's not my. I'm the only one. Nobody else is from abroad. I have to, I have to say your English is really good. I love your accent. I um, I think your English <laughs> is great to be honest. And yes, I do have the I had a situation before as well. I think depend from country to country and maybe England is not as open as other, other country to foreign people. But yeah, that's, the, that's our struggle, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Um, you know, I believe England is quite open. They are quite open, but um, they'll never tell you something um, straightforward. Um, so I love my job what I do with them. And the guys are really, really cool. I like them so much. Uh, and I believe that once they got me that opportunity, they haven't regretted it at all. But uh, until I got that, was a big struggle. It was, it was a big struggle. But afterwards, I was feeling so, so proud because the, so the training was um, extremely hard. I remember we were um, seven people in a group away from our, for our homes for eight days. So we were sleeping there um, in different town. And what we were doing, we were having, so that was a very tough training because they really wanted to just push us in a position um, to push you to, the, to your limits. So how could you respond? How could you react in a way? For example, if, you, if you're teaching for long hours and then you get really exhausted, really tired, how what your reaction could be. So what we were doing, uh, we were spending from eight hours in the water, just with little, just with a break for lunch. Uh, and then after that, eight hours, then you have a shower, then uh, you have a little rest, half an hour, and then we start with uh, paperwork and all this um, with the theory. Um, I was the only one speaking, um, not speaking English. Uh, I mean, you mean the only that you were not native English speaker? 
Yes. Okay. Yeah, not native. Sorry, no, yes, no, you're right. Not my uh, mother language. Okay, yeah, yes. That was some, yeah, that's true. And um, after that training, I felt um, uh, really inspired and I, I could feel that I can do anything I want to because it's up to me what I want to do. Uh, I did it. I did it. Yeah. Yeah, I was very, very proud. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah that's interesting. Do you have any regrets about leaving your country? No, I don't have regrets leaving my country. Um, I believe that, uh, especially nowadays, we do have our roots. This is certain. We do have our roots, but uh, we do belong whenever we feel home and whenever we feel welcome and uh, good. That's the most important thing. You can, you can make yourself... Um, home if you if you feel that you belong there and after 10 years here I feel home yeah and did you, I mean I guess your family is still in Bulgaria your parents oh, or? No. Um, so my my father is in he lives in uh, Spain okay yeah my mother uh, she lives here she came in 2014 my brother came in 2017 okay so most of our family most of my family is here already you know i don't don't feel long okay okay (laughs) that's probably that helps to not feel like any i don't don't have any regrets about leaving your country because if you leave your country and your family is still there i still until uh, at least that's for what i I heard from other people that's the main regret that they don't spend enough time with their family Family, I mean, yeah, the that, I think that's a big part, uh, it, especially when your family is away, not being able to see them or visit yeah. them or spend time with them as much as you can. But in my case, they're here, and I, I feel fulfillment of everything around. I've, you know, Danny, there is one part that I feel sorry. I feel sorry that my country um, couldn't keep me didn't keep me, didn't provide enough for me because, uh, you know, I feel that uh, all the people in the world that are trying to go somewhere else, they're trying, they're going somewhere else because of that search for better life. And if they find that better life where they belong uh, will be uh, beneficial for their country as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of people, even from Italy, they live, they do experience of overseas and they go back and they they learn a language and they bring this value and the skills they learn overseas back to the country, the raging country, and they do something good for their country, So, which is, which is great. I can definitely relate with you just said that um, Italy couldn't keep me. There was not enough opportunity for me. I wanted, I had bigger dreams than what the country can actually provide for me. Even, even for like going back to the family situation, I can, I feel more connected with my family now than when I was living with my mom, because I was living with my mom until I was 27. Right. Yeah. That's what, that's what we do in Italy. There's just <laughs> no judgment here. <laughs> I'm, 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 yes, I am. So I, I left Italy when I was 27 and I, I was living with my mom until then. And I feel more, co- I'm, I'm more connected with my mom now than, than yeah. before. Quality. Yes. It's the quality quality over quantity absolutely and there's something about being far that connects connects with people somehow because you start appreciating yes absolutely yes and one thing i, I want to share with you that i don't know if you had the same situation when you left bulgaria um but when i decided to leave the country it was like for me it was like a, i'd like a i'll quit my job in july and and I left the I left the country in, in September, so I had the old month of August to just enjoy, do nothing, and just just pretty much was like a party after party after party, just because people. I was moving from Italy to New Zealand, the other side of the world. I didn't know when I would would I be able to go back to visit them. So everybody was just like a throwing party after party just to say uh, goodbye or I don't know. In Italy, you mean? In Italy, yes. Yeah. Um, and I felt like I was on, uh, it's, it's, it's a weird, uh, try to follow me here. It's weird. It was like, I was feeling like I was on my own funeral where everybody gives you like a, 
tells you that they love you, prove they they love. And you're not even dead. You know, they usually the people say good things after you after you after you die at your funeral. And I was still alive. That was that's the feeling I had. I was like just like I had so much love in that month. It was probably wow. the best the best month in my life. Okay. It was and, and you can't you can't get that. I couldn't have that without living mm-hmm. the country, living the people I love because all my family and friends still in Italy. All the people, most of the people I love, are still there, and they're there every time I go back. And every time I go back is special. So it's 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 amazing. But yeah, being at uh, your own funeral is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably because you had big preparations of the event, you know. Yes, I mean it didn't happen overnight. So I I made my decision. I think was in. Uh, February, mm-hmm. I believe. I, I think I might have got the visa around April for to move to New Zealand. So I had uh, quite a few months of preparation to quit my job and mm-hmm. tell everybody I was leaving. So there was like a, a few months oh, of preparation. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, it was an amazing feeling. Amazing feeling. <laughs> and it was downside from there because you were like, you were up there of feelings, like people, connection, feel like you're surrounded by people that you love. And the next day you're on a plane by yourself on the other side of the country. That's like a, this big low. You know, for me, I remember when I was going to Greece because that was my first time leaving the country. I felt scared, very scared. I was taking my bags in a bus. I remember all by myself. And then uh, I was going to a life where I didn't know what what is there for me really scared scared thing i never rent a, a property uh before um mm-hmm. i was never living in a big town like like the saloniki then the second biggest town in greece um and i was never away from my family and friends uh for a longer than a week or two and then uh that event for me was like are you going to, you know, what are you doing? It was so, so scary. Oh, yeah. I think every journey, every, every journey, the beginning, the unknown, that's, that's the main thing, the unknown. When you don't know what's going to happen, what, when you don't know what's in front of you, uh, you're fearful. Yeah, that's what stops most of us. When we don't know what, where to go, we usually stand still. We don't go anywhere. We stay in the same situation, the same spot. And But when you overcome that fear, like when you get into the unknown and you walk to the other side, and all good and actually in a better in, in, a, in a better situation than if where you came in. you're proud of yourself. Let's give you the power to like, oh, I can, I, absolutely. And you can, you feel like you get, you can do any, almost yeah. anything because you have to reinvent yourself, right? You have to adapt. You have to learn a language. Um, in most cases, you need to learn language. You need to create your own life because you uh, you probably were in the same situation where everything you had was all your possession were in a, in a luggage, in a suitcase, right? So you, you, all your life is there. And from living in a house with... Everything you had, like uh, everything you collected over the years, it's there. And then you move to a different country on your own with all your belongings in a suitcase. And you have to start your life from scratch, from that suitcase. But then do you know what? Because I did have two suitcases, the same way that you explain and talk about them. You learn that actually uh, that suitcase is not important. Because the stuff that you left, the first time that you packed that suitcase and you regret it because you left them, because you've collected them for so many years, they don't really matter. Yeah, no, exactly. Even because most of, in most cases, all you got it's your clothes. You're not going to bring with you things from, I don't know, from your mm-hmm. childhood or your favorite toy That's or it. whatever. There's, there's no room for that. Yeah. What you got is a bunch of bunch of clothes that can be replaced mm-hmm. anytime, anyway. Even myself, I was. I don't want to feel like to say I'm, I'm special again, but I think um, my brain works a little bit different than yeah. most of us, most of the most of the people. Just because 
that's not a good thing. I think I'm like a, in some way, I'm more like a stupid than the other people just because my brain doesn't realize. For example, until I was in the airport by myself, I don't think my brain or myself realized what I was doing. I had no idea. I was like in this, like a bubble, like everything is great. Yes, I got to move to the other country. Well, it just needs a little bit more time to uh, realize things happening around. Yeah, I was, I was living in a, compl- in a bubble. I was until I was in the airport and that's where everything felt real. I panicked. I never had a panic attack in my life until that point. I was panicking. I didn't know what to do. I was in the middle of the airport in Malpensa. Don't know what to do. Like, holy sh! I'm really doing it. I didn't, I wasn't realizing until that, that, that point. I just, it, and that was like, it scared the crap out of me. Like I, as I say, until today, I never had a panic attack. That was the first time I had a panic attack, a, a panic attack in my life. I never felt the same way ever. Yeah. Even moving to Canada was, it was much easier. Like emotionally, it was harder to get through the all the process, immigration, everything. I think the first time is always harder. Yeah, <laughs> because they're known, right? Yeah. You don't know what's coming. I don't know what's the, the second other time, time, like, you kind of ready. Exactly. You know the process. You know. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of the feeling when you are a child and you go on the, the swimming yeah. pool, you know, like the big slides, wow. the big water slides. It's like, a, oh, I'm so scared. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Then you do it. You can't stop it. You can't stop. Yeah, I have, the, I have this feeling up, now, nowadays as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, then no, at the beginning, like a, when you don't know what's on the other side, you're just, it's, it's natural. You're scared, but then you do it and you... And you realize, you can, yeah, yeah, how great the situation is on the other side. Most of the time, at least that was for me and that was for you, right? What's the biggest upside about being an immigrant? Yeah, for, for me, the biggest upside coming here to this country, I've got many, I've got many, many things to share and uh, to be grateful, really. Uh, so one of it is, yes, the language uh, I learned um speak good English and then um, but then I think I learned to appreciate and uh, even I changed the way of my how I think in the way I see it sometimes because English uh, English people uh, they're very popular with their good manners so I believe um, that uh, I always like this big part of uh, how they're behaving in front of people and in their houses and all these things. You know, um, I like this type of uh, English manners that they're giving here. Um, they gave me confidence to believe in myself. Yes, because when you... Uh, it, let's, let's face it, I don't have the same start of, uh, for example, uh, my colleagues in the world, in my job, we didn't have the same start. But we're here, we're here in the same level. And uh, I'm wishing, I'm willing to go further. So this is the confidence. This is something that drives me forward and keeps me, uh, keeps me going and pushing me. Because I'm saying to myself, you know, I came 10 years ago and I did what I did. And I'm willing to do even more. So I'm I'm capable. I can do this. Yeah, I think that's the most important thing this country gave me. And I'm really, really grateful for this. Okay, I think that's bring, bring us to the next question, which I think you already answered that. But do you feel lucky to be an immigrant? Yes. And no. Okay. I feel lucky um, of the position I am. I feel lucky for everything I have. I feel grateful. Grateful is the right word for me. But um, I wish, um, how I see the things in the future is um, when I retire, for example, I want to go back. Yes, I want to go back. We people have our roots, as I said earlier. And uh, our soul know where we belong. Mm. So I want to be back one day. That's interesting. Not soon, but uh, one day. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, last question. That's a little bit tricky. Um, If you go back in time when you left uh, your country, Bulgaria, what would you say to your younger self? Like if you have a time machine, you can go back and talk to yourself back then. What would you say? 
I'll say to myself, hold on tight. You're going to learn so much things. You're going to amuse yourself with what's ahead of you and you're going to be proud of you. That's the best answer you could have given me. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Thank you so much for, um, for being in the show with me today, Tudora. It was a big pleasure, Danny. Thank you very much. Thanks again for having me. No worries. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoy listening to this episode. If you want to spend a minute to give us a review wherever you're listening to this, it will help others to find this show. And if you want to share your story, you can visit our website, immigrantslife.com or send an email directly to stories at immigrantslife.com. Also on the same website, you will find the show notes with all the information we discussed in this episode. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for listening. Bye.